guys, it's Tracy here from It's Nana's Place, also known as Nana Tazzy. I keep getting asked if I will show you guys how I made beef. This is an old map book that I stained the every living crap out of and they're gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous pages. I'm sure everybody's done something similar to this, but I'll show you how I did mine since I have so many questions about them. Um, let's see. There's no rhyme or reason to these, and they'll be used for collage or mixed media pieces or um, junk journal fillers. Um, possibly an art journal. I'm not sure what I'm doing with all of these yet, but um, I just wanted to grungy them up and I've succeeded in that. And I'm going to show you how I did these. I uh, also keep getting asked how I do... Uh, let's see. how I do my painty papers. Uh, these are some in progress. Um, I do not have a jelly plate, so I'm, I'm not jelly printing. This is just slap and paint on a page, and I'll show you how I do that as well. Um, and some of these are inks, some are paints. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to them. Colors don't matter, patterns don't matter. I've got to come back through and finish the back of them. Um, but yeah, today's goal is to show you at least how I do messy maps and painty papers. Alright, let's play. Messy maps. I started with um, the Road Atlas books. Let me put these aside. Okay, uh, the only one I have left to play with is this giant one of Alaska, which I almost don't want to use. And it's going to be going to be quite the thing. This is a stupidly messy project. So, under here I have an old cookie sheet, baking pan, whatever. But whatever your map fits in is better than not. I also have uh, paper towels. Those will get all stained up and gross and they'll be fabulous. But this fits inside because this is going to make a super, super mess. Also, um, for drying this, because it's 98 degrees outside, once it's all messy and wet, um, pretty much throughout, I uh, scrunch up all the papers and I just set it out in the front porch. Um, so it, it gets baked, uh, sun baked, as opposed to hand dried or anything. Today I'm going to just do part of this book because it's a massive book. But let's start. Oh, let's start here ish. We also need water. And. I'm not going to do these today, but you can use whatever inks you have. Spray inks, alcohol inks, um, I haven't played with these yet. The Distress Stain Dabas for it. Um, I'm using uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India inks, however. And we're going to go through a ton of them. You're going to be horrified. But let's see. Give them a good shake. Oh, let's do all the colors. Why not? Uh, let's do that there. Purple. Brown will save to last. Okay. Oh, let me move this. So many projects going at the same time, and I keep getting ahead of myself or in my own way. But open your map to wherever. Make sure your inks are ready to go. I undo the lids. 
This may horrify some of you, but yeah. In order to answer the question, how do I do it? This is how I do it. Now, I'm not saying you have to, or that you should, or whatever. This is just how I do it. going with our water bottle to soak the crap out of this page. If you are using spray inks, keep in mind your space because this is a lot of real estate to fill up here. So just yeah, keep an eye where where all your stuff's going. Spray, throw down ink, spray the ink, move your book all around. Spray some more, lay down that page, okay, we want to squish it all everywhere. It's going to squeeze out top, bottom, into your, your side of your book, your um, spine. That's how I tear out the pages. When this is completely soaked through, um, I start tearing them out. Okay, next page, which is the back of the one we just wet, same thing. Get it nice and wet. Throw ink wherever. And we're not going for particular patterns or anything. We're just putting color down and getting it moved all around everywhere. Don't worry about um, if you like it yet or not because you can come back after these are all dry you can come back and do other stuff to it or add more colors see we're already making a mess which is awesome wet your pages not want your pages as wet you may want them wetter I don't know it's different for everybody I have wax paper under my cookie sheet as well I'm gonna skip the page here see actually I'm gonna wet it see if we can't pull some of that through I don't know what's in the ink, it's making its own shapes and stuff anyway. If you are worried about stained hands, definitely wear gloves. I don't worry about it, it doesn't stay on my hands too terribly long. And I'm always covered in paint or ink anyway, so yeah, I'm not concerned about it terribly. But this pretty much is it. I, I don't I don't get precious with it. I'm not terribly worried about it. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, they look beautiful when they're done. They're all crunchy papers. to be wet, like soaking everything up. It will squish out everywhere. 
And when you're done with this, don't throw out your paper towels. There's lots of things you can do with these paper towels, but look at them already. Look. Gorgeous. The edges of your books are fabulous. have particular colors you want to do or something towards a themed book that might work better or just vintage colors there's no rules just make a mess and have fun wet this too and just leave them since they can't soak up something else. You may have pages you really don't want colored. Like this is already just mostly sea. The bearing sea to be specific. So that might not be something you want. You might want more of the um, topographical maps, which is fine, but if you need to flip through your book first or your maps first and, and see what you've got to work with that might matter, that, that might, um, depending on what you're going to do with the pages, that might just be a good thing to do. Let's see, let's do some orange, yeah. may horrify some of you, I'm sure some of you will give it a go, if you do, um, yeah, give me, link to me, or, or let me know how it went, so I can see what you did, um, I, I've seen this done, with the spray inks and whatever, and it's awesome, but I do a whole big book at the same time, and it's just way too much fun, but this is how I do it, it's really, really easy, um, just give this a minute here and I'll show you the, the bit in the middle uh, before we set it outside to dry oh and yeah you go through water like crazy doing this but that's fine let's see let's do blue and some purple they are going to do with this one is just smoosh it old school. See, look, gorgeous. More water, help it travel. You can use these as instant backgrounds, as an art journal, or whatever. I'm gonna do, let's see. Oh, it's washy. Alright, let's see if these will work on this big book. It may or may not, I'm not sure yet. I know this had a huge thickness to it so the spine's bigger than the last one that I used it should still work 
just as well though. And you could tear them out individually if you, you know, separate pages before you started if you wanted to just do one, lay one on top, do the next one. But this is how they look in the beginning. And you could stand this up and, and run it and, and let some of that, actually let's play with that, see? Let that redisperse. Okay, let's just dump that one on there. There we go. We could do it with all of them or none of them. This one we want a little more something here, I think. We want to let these really, really soak into the paper before we start scrunching them. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. patient when they're all wet like this because they will tear like crazy they will tear okay, I want some green in the middle of this one I think yeah see that was a plain or mostly plain one well my full bottle of water didn't go very far that's okay I do try and leave my corners somewhat not messed with. You can do doodles and designs and dots or not, it doesn't really matter. bottles or a pain. Come here. Mm. Okay. And I usually go through the whole book all at once. Uh, I'm not going to today, I don't think. See, that one's kind of icky. Mm. It'll be But Take your page, if you want really crinkly, chunky pages, take your page. What we're trying to do is not so much for the wrinkles um, that will happen, but we're trying to get some air up under these because these pages, at least in this particular book, are very thick and we want them to be able to dry. You could take a uh, hair dryer or your heating gun or whatever. I generally don't do that for anything. Um, if you do that, please uh, uh, hit me up in the comments below and, and let me know how it worked for a lot of pages. Um, I don't know how long that would take to dry, but I'm curious to know. And I, I just kind of fan fold these. You can scrunch them gently. They will tear if you get too rough with them, but they will also take a reasonable amount of, of abuse. So we're not being precious. This will also help colors um, mingle and integrate, so beware of colors that will turn into mud, namely your oranges and your purples, because they love to be mud. And I generally set this outside on the front porch because it is excessively hot out currently. Um, and what I'll do is I'll go and check on it after 10-15 minutes um, and just kind of start uncrinkling dry parts and, and re refolding or um, laying those slightly different so get different air channels in here. Um, at that time, once um, 
the half that's exposed to air, once that's pretty decently dry, very carefully spread some of them out and then I tear the page out uh, as close to the spine as I can. Let's see, that one we're just going to do here. Anywhere your ink has gotten away from you, like outside of our clean area here, Oh, that one's bad. Um, but you can just pick it up and wipe it on pages that aren't really, don't have much on them or don't have anything on them yet. This is an excessively messy project though, you guys. So really protect your stuff if you are in fact worried about it. So I think with my book here, oh yeah, see look, look how much mess those made. Gorgeous. What I'm going to do is take my paper towels very gently. Take the bit that doesn't have anything on them and pick up some of that stain. And I'm just going to find a random page and lay that in it. See? This chunk will do the same thing. Okay. Now I'm going to take this outside to dry. I'm going to wash my hands. Uh, make sure you put the lids back on your inks before you do anything though. Don't want them drying out or getting knocked over. These things are far too expensive for that. Okay. Um. Alright, when I come back, I will show you how I do my painty papers. Well, kind of. I usually throw them all on the floor on a great big huge drop cloth and just go to town uh, over several hours, but I will do a version therein on the table. So that's the messy maps. Um, I'll let them dry. I'll come back and show them to you when they're done. In the meantime, um, we'll work on painty papers after I get this in the sun and, um, yeah, start scrubbing off this stain. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, I just checked on the messy maps and they've still got a, a bit of drying to do, though they're getting there quickly. So in the meantime, let's make some painty papers. Why? Because why not? These can be as basic or as intricate as you like. You can come back and stamp on these or, I don't know, tear them up, use them as collage, use them as backgrounds. Right now I'm just trying to make a huge stash of papers ready to go because I always do a last minute, um, last minute journals or gifts or something or... I don't want to use pretty papers in a specific piece for collage, I just need something I can go over with gesso and painty papers are the way to do that. This is also an epic use of paints that you're not a huge fan of, but you know, you don't want to just throw them out because that's not cool. So that's part of the reason um, I'm doing these like this. I don't know if these are finished yet, but this is where this collection is at so far. So, how do we make painty papers? Um, I really am surprised that I keep getting questions on these because I, I don't know, I figured this was something everybody was aware of already since I'm really late to the game. Um, some of these are inks and I did them the same way um, that we did the maps. Just wet them, throw ink on it, slap a new page on the top and just keep going till you have a whole stack of them. See? And they just come out so pretty. This was a book on Mexico, or at least called Mexico. I don't know if it was actually truthful or whatever. Fiction, non-fiction. Um, you could probably use um, uh, 
watercolors, uh, inks, you know, tea, coffee, all of that naturally. See, some of these are only one-sided, so we want to do the backs of them today. And I'll sit down and do a whole bunch of these, and seriously, I spread out a massive drop cloth on my floor, and I just sit in the floor and do this for hours. Let's see, that one, yeah, that one will add to, I think. And those will add to, yep, yeah, and that one. Okay. This is also a good project if you're used to being precious or your pages should be just so or whatever. This is going to completely abolish that entire thought from your head. I generally make two stacks roughly even. I use a palette knife and or scraper card. Uh, also use Bondo spreaders if I'm not using my scraper card. For this particular one, in case I get asked, this was a cheapy set of permanent acrylic paints at Walmart. It's just a 24 color value pack. I'm not a huge fan of them. They, they're, they dry too uh, chalky for my liking. They're okay, you can write over them and all sorts of stuff, but I'm just trying to use them up at this point because they never seem to want to go anywhere. Grab some paint, slap it down. You're really, this mind-blowing stuff, you guys. I don't know if you can handle this. <laughs> no pattern, no rhyme, no reason. Just chuck paint on your page. Okay? And it's hot enough in the house today. These should dry pretty quickly, hopefully. And again, I'm not trying to cover the words in the background. We're just putting color on the page. And if you do it thin enough, you can still see the words through. So you might want to be careful what book pages you're using. If there's something risque and you plan on, you know, selling that or using it as a gift, you, you might want to double check that. Um, these for the now, as far as I'm thinking are just going to be for my personal experiments and um, art junk journals or junk journals proper or whatever. Okay, so we get our first color going, right? It doesn't matter how many you do, doesn't matter what pattern, doesn't matter what color you go with next. Just grab a color and go. Slap a little bit on all of them or some of them, whatever mood you're in. Um, take some of that off of there. I like to do this where it's not an actual full swipe. Just take all your excess off of the page and just kind of slap it on something else so you get partial chunks of color. We're going to go around and around and around. Okay. And yet you're moving the pages constantly, so thin paint is better. So I'm going to add a little more to this one. I do I need to clean my palette knife because it's got glue on it? You can start doing um, patterns or shapes or whatever you want at any time in the process. You could be using stencils now. Whatever you need or in the mood for, it doesn't matter. It's a great place to experiment and just, just play with your stuff, basically. Which I think is always a good plan, because otherwise why did you get it? Why did you buy that? Why did you bring it into your house if you weren't going to use it? Also, because we're not being precious, you're not allowed to be precious for this, okay? Best way to try not to be precious is to bust out as many as you can in as short a time as possible. It can be done and it is tons and tons of fun, okay? Because you're not thinking about it, you're just putting colors down. Um, let's see, what have we got? 
Yeah, let's use this one. Oh. If you've got a space, um, or you have the, the space to do it, I've also started doing this number here, where you get pages close enough and overlapping enough that you can take paint, you know, just put it on one page reasonably thick, and then just scatter it or share it off the edge of the page, because we end up getting these white edges. Sometimes it works great, and other times it doesn't. Again, we're not being precious. We don't really care about it. Slap all that down. Some of these might stick together if you're just chucking them everywhere like I am. Um, occasionally you'll get a couple stick together. Don't worry about it. If they tear when you peel them apart, use that for collage. Doesn't matter. is how I do my painty papers. And these really don't start with a purpose, I just kind of grab them as I need backgrounds or something. But that way I don't have huge wads of book papers that I have no idea what to do with. Um, this way I have huge wads of already started fodder for whatever, and somehow that just makes it easier to use. Okay. Oh, we have a huge storm brewing outside. All right, I'm going to show you the finishing bit that I figured out the other day. See if I can't get these not stuck to each other so badly. We do, we do. from the Walmart clearance section. Actually, let me see if I can find it. It's probably down here. Yeah. This is used to fill with some house paint and it's for um, rolling like edges against doorways and that kind of thing. Right? Anywhere you need a, a line. Well, we need a line. But, we're going to do it all over our papers. there. Now this is very, very messy as well. Because, you know, apparently that's all I know how to do, is make mess. <laughs> so, we're going to line up papers. And I don't mean precious like. I mean overlap this crap randomly. Yeah, sure. Sure, why not? Okay, what we want to do is kind of lock them together so they all fit. And these are going to move as we paint on them, so be aware of that. But we want to make sure we have no spaces between pages, just because. I'm going to shake this up. In here I've got some acrylic black with some water just to thin it out. And we're going to turn this to apply paint, match up our arrows, give it a shake. This is going to make a mess. See if we can't get it started, because I've already used it several times. There we go. Ah, uh, I think it drags more than it rolls now. Come on now. Oh, now we're making a mess, huh? Alright, let's see. No, it's still going to be messy. I should probably wash that out after a few rounds, I think. Oh, it's trying. Ah. Now you could do this with whatever you wanted. Mark making tools, whatever you have on hand. Prints. 
stamp, stencil, do you guys know the drill? Whatever you've got. You could flick and splatter and whatever at this point. And you can just go layer after layer after layer. Let it dry in between or don't. Let it get muddied up a little bit. There's no rules to this. None whatsoever. That is how I get my little black bits all over. Um, I haven't played with the white one yet. I do have a white one. Yeah, I'm going to have to scrub that out and uh, get it rolling again. But yeah, think outside the box when you go for art supplies. Check out your hardware store or check out um, the dollar store and all those places. Look at kitchen items. Look at household painting. Look at, I don't know, random whatever. You'll find mixed media everything when you look at outside the box. Okay, that is painty papers. And you, you can keep going or use them as they are or do whatever you want with them from here. It doesn't matter. Swap them. People love that. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to turn most of these into an art journal. Um, like an art junk journal. I think I want to use about about this size. I need a little bitty one because um, my next big one is massive. Um, I'm still working on it, but these are absolutely gorgeous. I love them, love them, love them. And these are just air dried. Just let them dry on their own. And they're still crunchy and fabulous. You know, but you could put a little gesso on these, just enough to, you know, tone down the words, leave the edges all painty, and, uh, yeah, you've got journal pages, or whatever. But, that's our painty papers. I'm going to go check on the maps, and I'm going to catch the wasp that's somehow crawling up the curtains in my art room. Dang it. And I will come back, check in with you with our messy maps and see where they're at. Okay, see you in a bit. Bye. Hey guys, back again with our messy maps. Um, these are half dry currently, but, and the wind's come up, so it's blowing smuts into my papers, so it shouldn't be an issue. But what I wanted to do is show you how I do the next bit. I start uncrinkling the pages very gently because everything towards the spine is so wet still, it's ridiculous. But we start uh, pulling out the bits that are dry and kind of flattening them out just to see where we're at. Some of these might tear, doesn't matter if they do, don't worry about it. You can use that for scrap papers or collage or whatever. I must apologize. Also, I trimmed the uh, caterpillar hedge yesterday, and my allergies, which I don't normally have an issue with, have been insane ever since. But with it windy outside right now, they're really... I cannot breathe or hear. So, that's hilarious fun. I'm sure it will be fine. Okay. Oh yeah, these are beautiful. And yeah, some stick together, some don't. That one tore. Don't really care at the moment. Very gently, because they're all from about half a page down towards the spine. Really, really wet still. You could probably bake these. Um, I usually bake my coffee stains or coffee dyed papers, and that's fine. Um, I haven't done it with a whole book of paper though. I probably want to tear out pages into single first um, and then stack and color them. Uh, let them sit probably longer and then bake them individually. I imagine. I will have to experiment with that. 
this is coming out quite nicely already. And because we didn't use colors that make mud too terribly, um, most of these colors are doable. Quite agreeable. Oh, I scrunched that one way bad. But that, my loves, is how I made my messy map, which is what I'm calling them at this point because it is so messy to make them. And you could currently, um, if you're very careful, start tearing them out um, as close to the spine as you, you can. I think this time though I'm going to leave them and just see uh, where they're at when they're, they're finished. But that's basically, I could probably leave them in there too and use this as an art journal or junk journal or something as well. But this is just about it for making messy maps. Um, if you give it a go, please do let me know. I'd love to see what other people come up with and um, everybody's got an individual spin on how they do stuff. So I think that's a lot of fun to see. Um, if this is something you like to see or you just enjoyed the video or whatever, please give me a thumbs up. Um, so yeah, like, subscribe. All the youtube -y things. Um, for those that have shared or commented um, on any of my videos, thank you so much. I love you guys. Um, doing these videos is so much fun, but anybody who's done them knows how much work it is. So really, really try and support um, any of your, your YouTube faves, people that you watch, because they really do put a lot of time into making videos. Um, and most of us do it just because we love to do it and want to share and see, you know, what the community's up to and it's it's just a good time but this is it for messy maps and painty papers and i will catch you in the next video thanks for being here today love you